In the mornings when I get up early in the morning and it's dark and I've had not enough sleep, it's the commitment that I made to people around the world that I would do this. I just want to get the miles done. Coming back to Australia has been an eye-opening experience to see a different part of my country that I haven't seen for about 30 years. This is not something I'm doing because it's a challenge I set myself. I'm doing this because I think it's the right thing to do. So also here is um, Reg, who's very kindly loaned us all of the camping equipment. A lot of Australians know that the Red Centre is in many ways the heartbeat of our country. Do you want to take the lead or There's 10 deserts in Australia, and in desert Australia, water is number one, because without water, there's no life. Now, when I was little, we grew up uh, through a 10-year drought, which meant that we had huge amounts of water restrictions. I think it made me value water. I think it made me appreciate water. Water is part of everything. So it's really important that people have a good understanding as to where our water comes from. You know, if somebody gets asked and they say the tap, that is not an adequate answer. Rita. The water that comes out of the tap in Alice Springs is between 10 and 30,000 years old, which means the water that we're drinking here and spraying on our gardens and using our vegetables and filling our pools with has been water since the last ice age. We're mining it, it's non-replenished. The kind of water that I'm really passionate about now is the water that goes into the stuff that we use by and consume every day. I was exposed to the hidden water, the invisible water, through conversations at the World Economic Forum. And that was one of those moments of, wow, my life is about to change. I don't think I knew it at the time. I could have continued on a path of making money and building my business and building other businesses, but I chose instead to do something that I'm totally passionate about and that I think we need to fix. I'm such an idiot. What happened? I fell over. Don't show my mum this picture. No. You know, we're good. We've already done 40. We can pick up the rest later. No, we no, can, no, no, no. It'll be fine. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. If you look at Aboriginal paintings, they're often like maps of sacred sites, and often those sacred sites are, are source, water sources. And in the desert here, a sacred water hole might just be a little crack in the rock with a little moisture that you can dig down for. Because without that knowledge of where to find water, when you're traveling across the desert, people would, would die. People here understand that it's a limited supply. There's no wastage. They appreciate it, they value it. It doesn't matter where you're from, you value water has been really kind of I think good for my soul and good for reiterating who I am as an Australian. I am an optimist at heart, I think. I think that uh, it's too easy for people to get stuck in doom and gloom looking at the challenges that we face. This is, it's a marathon that we're involved in. We're advocating for wise water use and making sure that we keep as much water in the same way that people are talking about keeping you know, uh, fossil fuels in the ground for climate change. We need to use the water wisely rather than selling the future out now. One of the messages I want to deliver to people about this whole campaign is to say that it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from, you can do something through your consumer choices to affect water use in other parts of the world. I think that if you know that there's a problem, you have to do something about it.